Right then gang, so we're at this lovely job out in the countryside, gorgeous, gorgeous place. Uh, and they've got a bit of a problem with the mains pressure. Now this video is gonna be perfect for you if you have problems with high pressure or you're installing something like a water softener and you need pressure control to protect the resin chamber, or you just need to be able to lower the pressure because you've got ridiculously high pressure on your system, which in which case is quite lucky because a lot of us don't have that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we do that. It's a very simple process. Most of you out there will be able to do this yourselves. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Hold tight. So we have got a system here by which, for some reason, they've got two massive accumulators, a load of filters. So our mains coming in is on this valve here. We then go down to 28 mil, and that zigzags up here, all the way up here, goes through this filter, through this filter, through a pressure reducing valve that is set currently to three bar. And as you can see, we are way over that, we're at five bar, unless the gauge has gone funny. Then we've got a, a strainer, a pressure relief valve, and then we've got just various services coming off. But the main bit I want you to sort of see is that our cold water main comes down here, goes into this accumulator at the bottom, this big old thing, okay? And then we've got another one that's teed off as well. Then these two both gather and accumulate water pressure overnight, ready to be pushed into the house when those services are needed in the morning and throughout the day. Okay. Oh, you know what, a cup of coffee. Have you got a coffee? coffee? Yeah, just black with one, please. Thank you very much. It's always nice when you're in a job and you get some proper coffee. Mm. So here's the new valve. As you can see on here, we can set different pressures on that. And then you've got a little pressure gauge that just pops in there. And then after that, we've just got a couple of adapter bits that I've had to pick up to get it over to 28 mil. Because at the moment, this is coming out uh, with these on here. These are supplied with it in inch BSP, but we need to get that down to 28 mil. So we get an inch BSP to 28 mil adapter and we'll pop that on there like so. First things first, let's actually get these two built up. So we've got our two fiber washers on here. It's optional if you want to put on uh, any kind of paste on there. These should be actually all right. Uh, and also I'm saying that because I've bloody left me paste in a field. <laughs> Typical sort of working out here, but there we go. So we're gonna just put these together now. This, the annoying thing about this is that, you know, cause this is a 28 mil one and you can get these in loads of different sizes and I'll leave links to that on our Amazon store. Because we've got to kind of build these up like so, they do get quite big, um, but that's just, that's life. Right, so once we've got both of those done, we can then pop on our adapters to get us over to 28 mil. See how big this, how <laughs> big it gets, it's madness, isn't it? I mean, that's gotta be about, be about a foot long now, this piece. Great thing about Loctite is it locks it tight, obviously, but also it just spews out what it doesn't want and it holds these really, really tight. So getting a bit nippy now, and I, you'll notice I haven't done the uh, gauge up on this yet because the gauges are a little bit like they're, they can break because they're made of plastic. So it's good to sort of try and get them on once you've done this sort of work because uh, yeah, you don't want it to just, just knacker the gauge or something like that. It'd be a bit annoying. You don't really want to have to be losing 100 quid on the job because you smash the gauge up. By the way, got my X Pro hat on. Some of you've been asking in the comments, what's the hat all about? Well, about a year ago, I started buying X Pro silicon. And I spoke to the old boy who owns the company, really nice guy, Oase. I said, look mate, I'm not gonna say anything about your silicon until I've used it for a year. And a year later, here I am. So I've got the brilliant Pro White. Well, I'll show you, I've got it all in me, in me rack now. Have a look at this. You've got me X Pro Brilliant White. So yeah, it's all in the rack, ready to go. And I'll be telling you about all this racking in another video. Right, so this is nearly ready to go on. So now we just take this little bit off here. Now, I don't know why they don't put a flat on these with a little O-ring or something like that to seal them up, but they don't. Therefore, you just got to use a couple of little winds of Loctite on here as well. Just get that in. Right, so we've got an arrow on this as well that denotes the flow of the water. So we want it to go up like that. So I, that means that I'm going to have my gauge facing this way. There's no point having it facing the way you can't see it. That would be silly. A few turns with the, hand, with the body and then just use this little bit here, okay, we'll just do this up. Next thing I'll do is we will turn down the pressure going through basically to that, okay, so it's at the lowest setting. Quality, now we're ready to cut this and get it installed. 
So we are going to try and fit it into this section here, okay, so then we don't have to get rid of that clip, even though we will pop it off. And so we're just going to cut in there and then basically get it installed. But first thing we've got to do is turn off the water. And it's important that we turn it off in a few different places. So this is our mains in here. We have to turn off the feeds on the outlets from our accumulators, otherwise we'll lose all the pressure that's been accumulated all over our faces. <laughs> so they're now off. Righty-ho, so now we should be able to cut that and get it all going, boy. Right, so we can have it this way around. So my bottom cut, I'm just gonna pop, yeah, it just didn't line with that. Bottom cut just here. There is going to be water. So we're just gonna let the pressure out of that in a sec once this cuts through. There's our water. Just gonna swing that around a bit more, cover you lot in water as well. Okay. Right, next bit, I'm just gonna pop that in there. Make a little white mark just there where I wanna cut the next piece. Just do this by eye. You just need to make sure you give yourself enough pipe to go into the pipe to the to the fitting so we can do it up. Also, I must say for this, especially if you're working on 28, it's very handy to have a 28 mil pipe slice and I have got that linked. No more using the hacksaw gills. There we go, that's all out. Makes it a little bit easier to take off the nut and the olive from the bottom fitting. Put that on there. And the same with the top, just shortens the, the whole span of the fitting, okay? So you can actually get it in. So we'll pop that on there. And also, you know, they're both on. Right, so we make sure the arrow's in the right direction. Right, there we go, that's in now. So we've got our arrow in the right direction. All we need to do is nip up the top and uh, the bottom and top compression fittings, uh, and then we're all done. Wind them back till they click, and then put them on. Same with the bottom one. Wind it back till it clicks. With a little bit of upward pressure, there you go. And that will ensure you don't get these, uh, so they're cross-threaded. Right, so we've got our gauge on there. We've got that set to zero. We've now just got to turn on our valves and make sure there's no leaks. Ooh, does make me feel a little bit peckish though, worrying about leaks. So we're trying to sort pressure out there. Before I turn the water back on and I can demonstrate to you the drop in pressure that's happened and the control that we now have on the pressure on that system, I want to talk to you about how I take the pressure off myself in a culinary way in the kitchen using HelloFresh. Crowbar, but who cares? Honestly, I've been having Hello Fresh for the last three months now. It's absolutely brilliant. One of the things I really, really like about it is the fact that I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight and it's easy for me to calculate the calories in Hello Fresh and also the protein. But also it's just super easy for us. Thinking about maybe going on holiday, I can quite easily just postpone, delay the Hello Fresh subscription for a little while and then come back and restart it again. And also it helps me simplify my routine. Today I'm cooking honey glazed spice roast chicken with creamy curried lentils and braised courgette. Follow the instructions here. I'm gonna start off by cooking the courgette, preheat the oven to 220. Sorry, Emily. Do you hear that? There's Emily in the background. She still doesn't trust me. Emily's here. Emily, how many have I cooked in all honesty? All of them. Well, that's not true, actually. <laughs> but I have cooked a lot, and I'm not the cookie type person, as Ted will definitely attest in the background. You can get 60% off your first HelloFresh box and free desserts for life by using the code PLUMMER2024 or scanning the QR code that's showing up now. So there you go, lovely. And I genuinely, I cooked all this. It was filmed, yeah? Uh, mm. Absolutely delicious. No stress, no hassle. I'm not under pressure, and hopefully, nor will this job be, and we pop that there now to see if I haven't got any leaks. So there you go, what do you think of that lovely little bit of HelloFresh there? We're back in here, let's get the water turned on. Woo! First things first, let's get that water on here. Right, so look, we can see there, we've definitely got a faulty valve on that because that's not saying anything, but, this 
This one here is saying huge five bar, but obviously on the outlet side of our high pressure valve, we haven't got much there at all. So let's just give that a little bit of pressure now. So now we're allowing pressure into the system. We're going to set that to one bar. So look, so look, let's just set that at one, and that's slowly going into the system now. But if we wanted to, we can set this a slightly higher. We're going to set this to two bar today. Let's just let that creep up a bit. Got no leaks. So that's just creeping up now. Hopefully you can see that all right, guys. Let's just give that up to two bar, and that should be enough for what these guys need. Having checked the... There we go. Brilliant. Control. So there you go, that's how you do that. It's a big old install there, actually, when it comes to the size of one of these things. They're never that big, really. The ones that you'd have in your home on 15 mil are much smaller, but they do exactly the same job, and they are pretty much mandatory to have, so don't put a water softener in without one of these, all right? If you don't think you've got the required skills to cut and also tighten up a compression fitting, then maybe you should check out my online plumbing school, learnplumbingonline.com. There's a link for it below. It will teach you everything you need to know when it comes to real basic essentials and knowledge in the world of plumbing. We've had loads of reviews now. I'm really, really chuffed about it. But there's also a place for you to ask me questions and also a community, very similar to like Facebook and stuff, where you can post your work and ask other students and users questions as well. So check it out guys if you can